Hunter x Hunter episode 35. It's like a slow, condescending clap. He looks so little. The X True X Pass. Even the phrasing of that says it all. Action, yeah. Oh boy. These subgenres. We've seen that. Some of these things seem like they, over, they repeat a little bit, but. Interesting. Whoa, 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 hold on. <laughs> Strength and objects. Propel their aura, alter their aura's qualities, manifest their aura, whatever that means. And not enhancing objects, but controlling objects. And then everything else, which is probably a huge, huge category. That makes a lot of sense, intuitively. Oh my god, the creepiness continues. Oh my god, the creepiness continues. Which is not to say it can't be done, right? But you're just kind of going upstream. Interesting. 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 Right, right, right. Okay, there's more than one thing in here. The first, I think, being a question of nature versus nurture, to which I think the answer is just yes, it is nature nurture. There's a lot of interplay between the two. And then maybe a more practical question is as an adult or when you're older, when you start having to make choices for yourself about what you follow, what are the things you're best suited for? And it, it doesn't preclude anything. There are no things you can't learn, right? It's just a matter of how much are you going with the natural current and how much are you going against the grain. Sometimes things that are against the grain naturally can be really useful, can be desired, and should be focused on. An example of that for me is is foreign languages. I'm like not a natural at all, but I still find it very important. But for all this talk of things we should do and summoning discipline and making yourself do the work and this heroic image of going through pain and fire and hell to get things you want, well, there's a place for that. I, I feel like the, the other side of that that's not talked about nearly enough is just being more creative or, or looking more zoomed out at the things you're already naturally enjoying or have high aptitude for so that it could fulfill multiple needs that you have. I don't think you can really get it wrong if you understand what's what. Like if you're targeting something that you're not naturally good at or don't really enjoy doing the the leg work for it's fine to do that with reasonable expectations like for example i'm never going to be a pro athlete yet i can enjoy sports at a recreational level there are some hobbies that i have that i feel like people will will never never catch up to me on or the average person won't ever catch up to me on just because for them it would be work and for me it's play then it seems really cool as this all encompassing magical system that is very one-to-one -one with who they are and their their identities and personalities probably also their dreams and their flaws etc it's the kind of power system that i like <laughs> Manipulate aura. Kyokake Oh, this creates a very interesting dilemma already. This feels like a, a game where you're able to choose your own stats on level up. You can maximize one, right? But then you maybe have glaring weaknesses. You can be an all-rounder at the expense of a really standout skill. Also, theoretically, there's someone who's mastered all six. And the implications of that, the possible combinations are unreal. Not necessarily. I mean, he lost, so yeah, but... Also, who knows? I think, yeah, like I was saying, picking it deliberately, purposely is important. This is exciting. Water divination. Curious to see, to know if we ever see wing in combat. Not an enhancer, it seems. Or a little bit, a little aptitude. Maybe it's close. I'm gonna have to do homework on, on these categories. <laughs> gonna have to review later. Nothing. That's all right, I mean, you got five more. This would be so much fun, man. I would love to do this. Interesting. 
<laughs> he took so much pride in that. I, what is the like the real life equivalent for the water divination test? I want to do it. Then would I even follow it? But does that mean that's what Gon is definitively, or just that he has some aptitude for it? One thing this arc does so well that just keeps getting me is simultaneously I'm so excited. It's so cool to see them discovering their powers and learning about Ned. But then there, there's this looming fight with Hisoka, and Hisoka is out, out there just killing the strongest Nen users in the world. They're out here playing with water cups, playing little bath time games. Okay. Stupid sexy <laughs> Hisoka. I don't know if he cleared that with wing or not. His aura just starts going immediately. I can't wait to find out also what uh, Kurapika and Leorio are. I also can't wait to fully understand what, what they are. <laughs> what these what these mean. It's a lot of information at once. If you stop here, at least you got a cool party trick. He's doing his best. He's keeping up with them. He's there. He's in the room. Well, I made it look so easy. Didn't even break a sweat. Compared to Zushi. Damn. <laughs> Boy, Wing's so excited. Gon's looks a little bit cooler. Who are you again? Poor Zushi though, for real, like it hurts so bad. He's been training for this so long, and these two naturals just come in and there's just no chance. There's no chance. There's also like, not only is there natural aptitude for which Nen, or like which category of Hatsu, let's say, there's a more base one, which is just aptitude for any Nen, which I think is probably true for life as well. In a sense, the base stats or the base algorithm determines the multiplier you get on additional skill points. Things like intelligence, natural creativity, ability to synthesize information, outlook, mood even, which I think a lot of people might take as a sort of defeating thought, but I think there's there's actually really good news in there, and ultimately it's, it's a positive. It's a bunch of things. I mean, one, given a very minimal baseline, you're going to be able to get whatever you want out of life. Nothing's really off the table. Two, though those base stats themselves can be improved. I don't know about IQ, but outlook, definitely. Mood, definitely. Creativity, definitely. A lot of them, I think, are a function of practice, habit, clear goals, outlook, and deliberate, conscious thinking. Looking at it in the lens of these three kids in this room, it's sad for Zushi. Looking at it in the context of their lives, Zushi's gonna crush it, and he may be able to crush it in a way that Gon and Kluwa can only dream of. I think it'll have a lot to do with how he responds to this, but man, does it feel frustrating? Because the natural inclination will be to compare. Compare himself. Oh, just like that, huh? Kula cool, hasn't even passed the, the first round of the Hunter exam, so. I feel like the Hunter exam is so far out of Gon's mind though right now. Honestly, the Hunter exam feels like low, like a low reward compared to where we've gone from there. But after all that, it still feels a little bit premature. Cups don't hit back or whatever the saying is. Yeah, I guess this is a pretty small world. Now that they've gotten this elite. Yeah, yeah, you have to. I feel like Gon will take it just to stay, stay alongside him. Nah, it means a lot to him. Oh, we just skipped right through that, but okay. All we saw was the introduction. Maybe Lyra was the best of them. <laughs> he just has a better route. I can't wait to see Lyra's introduction to Nen. I have a request too. Please don't die. Am I crazy or is, is there not a huge leap from the water divination, divination thing to Hisoka? Right. It, going and Kluwa just created a weird scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even that's a comparison though. <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll, he'll find it. He'll get it. You admire the, the fire inside. But like for Zushi, my, my recommendation would be to reframe it a little bit. Like, why does he want to use Nen? To what end? If he can identify the end that is actually the best suit for him and would give him the most personal fulfillment, there might even be some wasted energy trying to catch up with Kluwa and Gon in the same way they're practicing Nen. Speaking of great, like, just base building skills that can be learned, I don't really know how to fully articulate this, but I think about it all the time, is just to find your edge, right? Like, what are the things that really matter to you that you could never contemplate minimizing or downgrading, let's say? That's 
that's your root. And then on the other side of that or surrounding that, what are the things that actually you would be equally satisfied? You'd have exactly the same amount of utility in your life, but by making a small tweak, that thing comes much easier or even better. In a sense, if you downgrade one or what other people would consider a downgrade, you're actually up to give a very material example for my own life. I really care about freedom and my definition of what that means has, has changed and become more refined over time. But looking at it very simply, it's about like making my own choices in life, going where I want to go, spending my time how I, I want to spend it, having free time to explore a bunch of different things and kind of follow my, my creative outlet and maybe even just feeling like I have autonomy and that I am writing my own story. That's really important to me. And again, very materially, one way I could look at that is like, okay, well, I need to have a ton of money, right? I need to become just ultra wealthy so that money buys what I want. And that's solid, nothing against that plan. But then if you really think about it, it's not so much how much money I have, it's how much I have in excess of what I need. And one way I can sacrifice, quote unquote, is I'm very flexible with my location. I'm from New York and there's just a ton of hype and branding and New York loyalty that I think New Yorkers are, are born into and grow up with so that many New Yorkers can't even fathom living anywhere else. For me, that's an edge though, right? Like I'm willing to sacrifice that and live somewhere else where I'm paying way less cost of living. And it's even better because by making this like downgrade, quote unquote, I actually enjoy my life so much more. There's so many other things I like about living in Korea, for example. There's a lot of things that I maybe believed I needed or people would tell me I need that I've been able to really sort out for myself and decide what's important, what's not important. And by sacrificing the things that are not important, while at first glance, it may seem like a downgrade for me, it's actually an upgrade because it gets me much closer to the things that I really do value. And that's just a material example. I think that framework of thinking about things, what actually matters, what are the things you can sacrifice that don't matter can apply to so many different elements of, of human life, human spirit. In terms of goals, the things you're fighting hard for and spending all your energy on, what is really at the heart of that? Like what is the, the output? What is the real utility? It's, it can be hard to figure out because sometimes the, the motivations are hidden. Is it that you want to be an actor or is it that you want to have esteem from people that you meet? Do you want to have a wow factor? Well, maybe there are better ways to have that wow factor for the people you actually care about wowing in a way that's more natural to your spirit that you would feel better about. You know, maybe the pursuit of acting would, would feel empty and hollow to you ultimately. It would be a means to an end. Maybe there's an easier route you could look at where this is A, much less competitive. B, I enjoy the actual nitty gritty work of it much more. I feel better about the result of it. And it still like hits that spot for me where I'm impressing the people that I want to impress or I'm able to get the self-esteem I need from what I'm doing. Rethinking it in that way, like really what is the, the goal in conjunction with what are the things I'm spending a lot of energy on that force me to incur great costs, but at best are a neutral and at worst a detraction from what actually is important to me. And the greater and more expansively, more broadly you can imagine that, the more you can really find your spot, you know, and find your, your edges as I like to think about them. And that's, I think, Zushi's path. It's not going to be like beating Gon. Though if he did, that would be a whole different impressive thing in itself. Yeah, I would imagine there'd be a ton of hype for this match. I want to see the betting odds. This is going to cliffhanger me, isn't it? Soka's been waiting for this for how long? Months. Are they going to do WWE entrances? No music, though. We also didn't really see them reviewing the tape that much. I want to believe he's more prepared than we've seen. And so called fan favorite too. I'm tempted to think that victory here for Gon is just punching him in the face. But I want to believe he can do more. Speaking of waiting. Oh god, why? Swing. It was bad enough before it was that egregious. You don't say. This is a highly inappropriate environment for a child. <laughs> I guess that should have been obvious long ago, but Soka just made it extra real. I mean, really, it, it is. I think, yeah, going well. Of course. Oh. Gon has more up his sleeve, though, right? He's not just... This is not it, right? He's not just... Trying to outpower him. So good, so calm, so calm, so collected. Right, it looks awesome though. It's so well done. Ah, uh, uh, it just feels like. Come on, get a blow in. It feels like Ahsoka's playing with him and could have killed him already. It's like he wants going to push his ability further in this fight for maximum pleasure. 
Control your emotions. You know how much this could hurt Gon, you know how much he could lose his, his crap, but it's clear how fatal that would be. The only thing going for him, I think, is that Hizoka is not really that serious. He's kind of playing around. There you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Feel it out. Take your time. Yep. Yeah, the water divination wasn't cutting it. Soka might have just taken a breath and relaxed a little bit. That's a lot of fainting. For what? <laughs> For what? Oh yeah, go to our old tried and true. Platform smack. Going spread and butter. Yeah, make him work for it. Where is he? You better kill him right now. <laughs> you better use this. Yes! Well, that's victory condition number one. That's that's spiritual victory right there. But that also just put going in a ton of danger. So many mixed feelings. He promised and he came through. And now his is ready to kill. Oh no, you just woke up the beast. Hizoka wasn't even using Nan yet, really, it seemed. He was just definitely dodging attacks without moving. Gon did it. I mean, credit to him. I gotta be careful because I don't want to root against Gon, right? But the show has done such a meticulous job building up Hisoka and the gap in their power levels. I feel like this might be a rocky situation where, where Gon wins by one of those going the distance kind of things. Landing the punch is huge. He's a contender, right? It's like his, his star is rising. He was able to touch the very best in so many things in big pursuits. The biggest gap is not between one and like a billion. It's between zero and one, even though it's just one unit or digit or whatever. The chasm in which you're nothing is so much longer, so much broader, so much farther farther in, in many fields, in many pursuits, than it is from going from something to a lot. Once you have that point, you know, you have that notch. It's evidence that what you're doing has entered into the domain of something that is real and works. And now it's a matter of pushing that, cranking that leverage as much as you can, perfecting it so that it scales. Although we don't see it, almost all large endeavors live and die in that chasm of zero. If I'm being honest, I don't fully expect to go into win this fight against Ahsoka. And I expect him to survive just sort of because he's the main character. But landing that hit is almost bigger than a win. It's interesting. I feel like the show has, has played with this scale a lot in different ways. It's like I was just saying about the hunter exam. He passed the hunter exam, but like we've sort of moved on so much past that. It's like, what are the stakes of that anyway? His career, you know, his money, his esteem. Gon is on his own path that he's making that he doesn't really need any of that stuff. It's just going to be a tool for him. Similar to this win, like Gon doesn't need to be a floor master. Gon doesn't need a, a hotel upgrade. He needs to be following his destiny and growing in ways that are relevant and meaningful to himself. Speaking of like having things clearly articulated and defined. And in this event, it's punching Ahsoka in the face, coming through on his own vow, his own promise. Him winning would be huge, don't get me wrong. I mean, that would be above and beyond expectations. But there's something so powerful about that moment in and of itself, regardless of outcome, assuming he survives. Hunterpedia. Hunter Cyclopedia. Introduce Hisoka. Don't do that. Here I was worried about their purity and innocence. I need not have been concerned. I don't know, I guess they're just adults. They live in an adult world. Schwing is the least of their concerns.